Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday, our favorite day of the week here at Pathway. We're so glad that you're here and journeying with us in faith. If it's your first time here, we have something called a connection card found in the pew back in front of you or on our website. Fill that out so we can stay connected with you and get you plugged in. If you are a loved one's ever in need of prayer, there's also a card in front of you or on our website. The staff prays over everyone every single week. We also have give cards in front of you. Scan that QR code to give easily online. We just have a few announcements before we get started. Coming up next week already is Miracle Sunday. We're trying to bring in $75,000 to help us with our budget and get in a better financial position. We know that the Lord is so big and he provides in big ways. So please be in prayer with us over this Sunday and what the Lord might be asking you to give. And it's also second Sunday brunch that day. So don't forget to bring your favorite breakfast or lunch dish to pass. And then the week after, Sunday the 15th is Sunday Fun Day, where we're just going to celebrate all the funds that the Lord and you guys bring in. We're going to have ice cream in between services, so we hope to see you then. We have so many things coming up this fall, and one of them is St. Joe Today's Fall Festival on the Bluff. We're a member of St. Joe Today, so we get to have our very own booth, and we're going to give out candy and some general information to the public but we need your help stuffing a ton of bags of candy. So we're gonna be meeting Friday, September 20th um, to stuff candy. If you wanna help with that, there's a sign-up sheet at the Opportunities Desk. Sunday the 15th, we are starting season two of The Chosen. We had so much fun watching the first season with you guys. So we can't wait to see you then at 7 p.m. Last but certainly not least, please don't forget to check out our Opportunities Desk. We have so many different things you can sign up for, like helping with the rummage sale, helping with the St. Joe Today Fall Fest, or um, helping with sewing ministry, all of these different things. So please check that out. Don't forget about all of those opportunities, and make sure you're following us on social media and checking out our website to stay in tune. Thanks so much for listening. Let's continue in worship together. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship. Let's stand and sing together. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my tomb Till I met you I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide It was my doom Till I met you You called my name and I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day Now your mercy has saved my soul Now your freedom is all that I know The old may do Jesus, when I met you Stay. You called my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious 
stay I needed rescue, my sin was heavy But chains break at the weight of your glory I needed shelter, I was an orphan Now you call me a citizen of heaven When I was broken, you were my healing Now your love is the air that I'm breathing I have a future, my eyes are open Cause when you call my name I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day I want to welcome you to worship. It is a beautiful morning. Um, as I've mentioned almost every week that I'm here, every morning that you look outside and you're like, oh, I'm still alive. That's a great morning. A lot of blessings that we can count, even though we don't necessarily see them. Let's continue to sing. To the King of glory and light, all praises. To the only giver of life, our maker. The gates are open wide, we worship you. Come see what love has done, amazing. He bought us with his blood, our savior. The cross is overcome, we worship you. Shout, Hosanna, Jesus, he saves. Shout, Hosanna, he rose from the grave. Come and lift him up, Hosanna. Now let the lost be found, forgiven. Death could not hold him down, he's risen. So let the saints cry out, we worship you, we worship you. We shout, Hosanna, Jesus he saves. Shout, Hosanna, he rose from the grave. Same power that rolled the stone away, the same power alive in us today. King Jesus, we call upon your name, no other name. The same power that rolled the stone away. We call upon your name, no other name. We shout, Hosanna, Jesus, he saves. Shout, Hosanna, he rose from the grave. Come and lift him up, Hosanna. Shout, Hosanna, Jesus, he saves. Shout, Hosanna, he rose from the grave. Come and lift him up, Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. Let's bow our heads in prayer together. 
Gracious Father, we are thankful for a beautiful day. We're thankful for the sun shining and the breeze blowing and flowers and colors and things that we see that we can't count that are majestic and wonderful and speak to your power and creativity. We're thankful to gather here and worship. We're thankful to be numbered among your children and among those blessed by the good things that you have in store for us. We ask that you help us to be looking to you with eyes open, with hands raised, ready for blessings. Help us to not to turn away, not to try to do things ourselves, but instead to lean upon your power. It's through your son we pray. Amen. Take a seat. Uh, and at this time, if we have any kids here that want to go off to Children's Church with Mr. Danny, you guys are free to go. Hope you have a good time, learn a lot, come back and share what you learned. Well, good morning, my friends. How are we doing today? More of you have had coffee than the first service. Uh, for those that don't know me, my name is Will Flaherty. I serve as the Director of Children and Youth Ministry, and it's my pleasure to get to share with you guys today. We have officially reached, for many people, the end of summer. So many people consider Labor Day weekend the end of summer. And I know for people that look at the calendar, summer doesn't end until the 21st of September. Some people, the official end of summer is when the kids go back to school. Some of you have already experienced that. Some of you, it's the first time you can get that pumpkin spice latte or whatever pumpkin spice flavored, whatever you get. Uh, for some, summer's officially over and fall is here when you watch that first college football game. Anybody do that yesterday? I know I didn't, but good for you. Um, but all summer long, we've been in the Gospel of John. In fact, the last two summers, we've been studying the book of John. And just this summer, we looked at what does it mean to be a child of God? What does it mean to be a servant leader, to listen to the voice of the good shepherd who wants to call us his children? What does it mean to feel betrayed? What does it mean to remain in the Father and bear good fruits? And so much more. Now, we're not at the end of the book of John. We got about four or five chapters left, uh, but we're going to get into those at a little bit later of a date when we really d dive into uh, Jesus' prayer in the garden, his arrest, his trial, his crucifixion, and his resurrection. Um, but we're re rounding the end of our summer series in John. Uh, and I wanted to focus on just that a little bit this morning, this idea of time. Um, have you ever noticed that the longer you live, the quicker time seems to go? I remember being a little kid in elementary school, and the closer you got to summer vacation, the slower each school day started to feel, right? And now we go, wait a minute, it's already September. Anybody else hard to believe that? That we're this far into the year? Or some of us, we're still trying to process that like it, we think it's still 2021, 2022, when, because those first that first year of the decade of 2020 was so bizarre. And we're like, that was just last year. No, that was three or four years ago. Time is one of the most interesting things when we think about it. It's always constant, right? Nothing we can do can make a day go slower or a day go faster. But when we're excited about something, when we're looking forward to it, the time seems to crawl on by. And on the exact opposite, there's many times where we've realized, oh, wait, the deadline for that project is tomorrow. It is the most constant but ever-moving thing that we can experience. And it's just one of those things that even back in Jesus' time, he was talking to his disciples about time, specifically the time before he went to the cross. Now, at this point in the gospel story as we've read it, Jesus has spent the last several chapters talking about the Last Supper. He's washed his disciples' feet. They did co the first communion together. He was betrayed. He predicted the betrayal of Judas Iscariot. Uh, and now he's told them that he needs to go so he can send this special advocate ahead of them. And they're on their way to the garden. He's talked about what does it mean to remain in him and bear good fruit. But he encourages them and reminds them of something in today's scripture. This is going to be the book of John, chapter 16, verses 16 through 33, and it says this. In a little while I won't see you anymore, but a little while after that you will see me again. Now some of the disciples asked each other, what does he mean when he says, in a little while you won't see me, but then you'll see me again, and I am going to my Father? But what does this mean by a little while? We don't understand. 
Jesus, realizing they wanted to ask him about it, he said, so he said, are you asking yourselves what I meant? I said, in a little while you won't see me, but a little while after that you will see me again. I tell you the truth. You will weep and mourn over what is going to happen to me, but the world will rejoice. You will grieve, but your grief will suddenly turn to wonderful joy. It will be like a woman suffering the pains of labor, but when the child is born, her anguish will give way to joy because she has brought a new baby into the world. So you will have sorrow now, but you will see me again, and then you will rejoice, and no one can rob you of this joy. At that time, you won't ask me for anything, and I tell you the truth. You will ask my father directly, and he will grant your request because you use my name. You haven't done this before. Ask using my name and you will receive and you will have abundant joy. I have spoken of these matters in figures of speech, but soon I will speak, I will stop speaking figuratively and I will tell you plainly about the Father. And then you will ask in my name and I'm not saying I will ask the Father on your behalf for the Father himself loves you dearly because you love me and I believe in and believe that I have come from God. Yes, I have come from the Father into the world, and now I must leave the world to return to my Father. Then his disciples said, at last you speak plainly and not figuratively. Now we understand uh, that you know everything and that there's no need to question you, for we believe that you have come from God. And Jesus asked, do you finally believe? But the time is coming. Indeed, it is here now where you will be scattered. Each of you going your own way, leaving me alone. Yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. And I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Here in these scriptures this morning, we see Jesus talking to his disciples and saying that he is no longer going to be with them. Now, this is such an interesting thing because Jesus is talking about so much here. He is talking about how in just a little while, the very next day, he is going to be put to death by the Roman officials. He is going to die a mortal's death on this world. But he's doing so because he knows his mission and he needs to die to save us from our own sin. He needs to Rise, raised to life again, so raise us to new life, and he must go be with the Father to send the Holy Spirit to dwell within us. He's saying all that. He is saying, I must go so that in a little while the Spirit of God can come and live within you all. He is also saying, yes, I am going to physically leave you. I'm going to physically give up my life, but in just a little while you will see me again. I will raise back from the dead to life and I believe he is also telling them, yes, I am going away now. But one day you will see me again because I'm going to come in final victory and deliver all of the world to its final judgment. I'm going to come back and defeat sin, defeat death, defeat the enemy, and usher in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is saying so much by saying, I am going away for a little while, but you will see me again. Because Jesus knew the job that the Father had sent him to do. He came to this earth for 33 years. For three years, he did public ministry and was able to be seen by people. People were able to learn directly from him, experience him. He had time here on this world, and he had a job to do even after this world in preparing a place for us in the kingdom of God. And that's where he said he was going to after he came back from the dead. And we only have to wait a little while longer. Now, I love this idea of Jesus telling us that we need to wait for a little while longer. Because I don't know about you, but one of the hardest things to comprehend is this idea of being patient with God. And we need to practice our patience, but I've heard very many wise people in life say, never pray for patience, because God will give you things to be patient about. But my favorite example of whenever you talk about patience, if you have never experienced, I'm guessing many of you have experienced this, dealing with a very small child who does not yet understand the idea of patience. Anybody else experienced that? Uh, I got to take my niece, Addie Bree, who you see running around here all the time, and I can't stop ever talking about because she's my favorite. Um, 
I took her to the park the other day, and when she's at the park, her favorite thing is the big slide. She's this tall, she loves going up like the 10 foot tall slide. The child is fearless. And she is gonna go up that slide as many times as she deems necessary. The problem is, doesn't matter if there's another kid going up the stairs. Doesn't matter if there's somebody sitting up. She's, nope, slide. It's my slide. I'm going up it. And while we were at the park last week, she was going up the slide, and there was a little girl up top. And I kind of, she was halfway up the stairs. I kind of grabbed her, and she goes, I'm like, we got to wait our turn, Addie Bree. And she just looks at me and goes, no. And she's trying to climb the slide out of my arm, just like, no, I'm doing this. And how often is that when God tells us we have to be patient, we have to wait, but what is our earthly answer, our inclination is to say, no, I want this in my time. I don't want to wait, God, for you to say that the time is coming or will be here soon. We want everything now. We live in a world where we are so used to instant gratification, where all we have to do is press a button and we can order whatever we want online, or we can just go through a drive through and boom, you have food right there. We're so used to getting what we want right when we want it that we forget sometimes that God says, wait, this is not the right time for you. You need to wait a little while longer. Because the beautiful truth is whatever we pray to God, God is going to answer our prayers. That does not mean God is going to give us everything we pray for or everything we want. Sometimes the answer is yes. Sometimes the answer is no. And sometimes the answer is you have to wait just a little while longer. And when we think about this concept of a little while longer, it can be frustrating because I don't know about you all, but I like having schedules. I like having deadlines. I like knowing when everything is going to happen. So when somebody says, just, just, just wait, just be patient, that bothers me. Like, get, like, tell me 10 minutes, tell me an hour, tell me whatever. Because we are, we are human. We have a finite ability to understand time. But then you have God. And in 2 Peter 3, 8, uh, 2 Peter 3, verse 8, Peter talks about God, and in the context of the scriptures here, he's talking about when Jesus is going to return and bring about the final day of judgment. He's saying, for God, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. That would drive me insane if that was the concept of a little while. It's something that we can't fully understand. But when we realize that God has so much of a better idea of time than we do, God is something that existed before the world, before we had a concept of time, and will exist into eternity, I'm going to trust the thing that has the wider picture and not my own finite brain, not my own human wants, my human desires, my human concept of a little while because I and all of us, think about this, we are just a tiny puzzle piece in the grand scheme of the universe and we don't have the box to look at to go, where do I fit in? God sees the whole picture. God knows how everything should work in his time, how everything fits together perfectly into the world that he created that we messed up. But he, even he said, I have a plan for this. It's just going to take some time. When we put our trust in God's time versus our own, it opens us up to so many beautiful possibilities. It opens us up to truth and to understanding and Jesus reminds us that there's times for everything. He says again in verse 20 of what I read to you this morning, that you all will weep and mourn, but the world will rejoice and your grief will turn to wonderful joy. He is telling his disciples that they will experience human grief because of the loss that they are about to suffer. Their friend, their teacher, their rabbi is going to be put to death. And most of the disciples aren't going to be there to see it. They're going to scatter for their own safety. And the world itself, after experiencing this, is going to rejoice. But he's not talking about how the people that wanted so badly to put Jesus to death are going to celebrate because they got what they wanted. No, he's, what I believe the scripture is saying is the world itself will rejoice because Jesus died. He brought us a path back to God. That because Jesus had to go away for a little while, in this case three days, we had a way to walk into eternity with him. 
Again, how many mothers out there can relate to the image that Jesus used where it said it'd be like suffering the pains of childbirth, but all of that goes away the first time you hold your son and daughter or see them for the first time, and you're just overwhelmed with this sense of joy. That is the same feeling God has for us. He is our loving Father. He is the Son that came to experience life in all of mankind, and He is the Spirit that dwells within us. It is the truth of what it means to go into eternity. And it is one of the things when I hear about time, when I look at what we're supposed to experience, we all are going to gain an understanding of what eternity is like. But that is a double-edged sword, my friend, because for many of us, hopefully all of us here, and many of the people that we know who have put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, eternity is going to be a beautiful experience where we cannot help but worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords and do all the things for his glory and never have to walk away from that presence ever again, never to feel alone, never to feel heartache, never to feel sorrow, but existing in the joyful presence of God. But for many people, their eternity is not as joyous. Their eternity is a place where the scriptures say there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth and pain and sorrow. And to me, most importantly and most heartbreakingly, eternal separation from the God that loved them and created them and wanted nothing more than to bring them back into his relationship. But some people on this earth were just too stubborn. Every single day that we are given on this earth is a gift. Every minute, every second of the time that God gives us is something that should not ever be taken for granted. We only have a little while while we're here. We only have a smidgen of our existence here on this earth before we go off into eternity. And my question for you all this morning is, how are you using the time that you are given Do you have the mentality of every day when you wake up, when your feet hit the ground, or you raise up going, God, you have given me this day. How can I use it for the best of your glory? How can we use the time, the gift that we have been given to tell other people this joyous news that we have, to spread God's kingdom? Because guess what? It is so easy to look at the world around us and notice the brokenness, the hurt, the people that our eternities are in question What are we doing with our time to go to those people, to help them through situations, and to share what God has done in our lives with them and be there for them? Because I talked about how God is so vast. He existed before time. He will exist past eternity. He is all-powerful, but he chooses to act slowly. Again, in 2 Peter 3, 8, it talks about how the reason that for God a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like a day is because he is being patient with his judgment. I believe that God could come back this afternoon and a lot of us would be ready to go. We'd have our calendars clear. We'd say, let's go, God. This is your victory. But I truly believe God is going, no, no, no. There are a few more people that still need to hear. And by a few, I mean hundreds of millions and billions of people need to hear and understand and accept the truth of what God did. So he is giving us his hands and feet, his children on this earth, as much time as possible to reach out to the people that need to know this truth, that need to hear the love of Jesus Christ, that need us to use the gift of time that we've been given and the stories that God is telling through our own lives to let them know that they are a piece of this puzzle that God sees and we'd love to see how they fit into it and use their gifts and talents like we get to use our gifts and talents and when we understand that we enter into this beautiful working partnership with God and we get to use the time that he has given us for his glory not our own personal interests and desires and again we see the disciples this group of people who I always love to say have the best of intentions but always tend to make mistakes. They finally understand it too. They're no longer questioning what Jesus is saying. They believe truly that he is from God. And Jesus says, my time is soon here. Nay, it is here now where I must go away from you. You will scatter, 
But don't worry, I'm not going to be alone because Jesus was never alone on this earth. God was always with him until the moment he was on that cross when he took the sins of all mankind upon himself, when he who was without sin became sin and shouted, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That is the only time in Jesus' existence where he had to exist without the Father in him. And talk about when a day feels like a thousand years. I'm sure that was the longest period of time Jesus experienced was the time he did not feel connected to the Father. But we know that Jesus was victorious. He rose up from the dead. He overcame sin, overcame death, and he is part of the Holy Trinity. He is God in human form. He went from this world. He went up to heaven to prepare a place for us. And it's only going to take him a little while. We have to wait a little while longer before he comes back in his glory, before the evil one, the devil, the king of this world can't even stand up to him and he just will say, go and will have victory over all things. Jesus accomplished so much in the 33 years he was on this earth, this measurable time. He impacted so many lives in just his three years of public ministry. My question for you this morning, what are you doing with the time Jesus gave you? How are you using every day of our lives for his glory and his power and his honor? Because there's going to be days where it's going to be so easy to be on fire for God and want to go to every single person you interact with and go, let me tell you about this beautiful love story, this rescue mission that I am a part of. And then there's going to be days that that's the furthest thing from our mind where we experience the other side of life, the human side of life, the part where sin has gotten into our world and we have experienced loss, we've experienced heartache, we've experienced brokenness and pain and trial and sorrows. But if you take nothing else from what I say this morning, let me, let me remind you of this amazing truth that we can hold on to every day of our lives. John 16, 33 says, I have told you all of this so you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Jesus is telling his disciples that from the beginning of time, his time on this earth and into eternity, there is nothing that this earth can throw at God that God cannot handle, that God cannot just wave off to the side because all power, all glory, and all authority will remain with him now and forever. Whenever we struggle, whenever we feel heartbroken, whenever we feel alone, whenever it seems like every single domino is falling in the wrong direction of life, we can take heart because Jesus has already overcome the world. He is the King of kings, the Lord of lords. He is our overcomer. He is our redeemer. He is the one that is always in power. And he has gone on to do even greater things than we could think possibly that, that could ever happen and he asks us to come alongside. He says, I know you're going to face trials on this earth, but they're temporary things in the grand scheme of eternity. But he is the king forever. He is on the throne before time, now, and forevermore. His spirit lives in us and works through us that no matter what we may go through, no matter what trials we face, when the time comes, we will all return to the Father. We will all hopefully one day get before him when this judgment comes and hear the words, well done, my good and faithful servant. But whatever happens, remember that this is just a little while. And that whatever we are going through, we may take heart because Jesus has already overcome the world. Let's pray. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you. We thank you for every day that you give us because it is truly a gift let us use that gift to impact the lives of as many people as we can so that they may be experiencing your glory and your presence and your worship forever. God, we thank you for what you do and everything you do for your children. In your son's name we pray. Amen. I want to remind you all that every single week we take up an offering that can either be done as you leave here uh, in the offering plate, or if you see our give cards in the pew in front of you, that gives more information on how you can partner with us in our missions and our ministries here. 
We're going to do something a little different this morning. Every week we take communion here at this service. It's one of my favorite parts. But what we're going to ask you guys to do is during this next song, to come up to the rails and receive communion. We're not going to pass it through the pews. We're not going to give instructions. But it's our time to come up and remember what Jesus Christ did for us, how his body was broken, how his blood was shed. And every time we do this, we do so in remembrance of the one who gave up everything for us. So during this next song, we invite you to come up and receive communion. I invite you to stand up. Lift your head, lift your eyes, look to the sun. In the test, in the trial, His grace is enough. His grace is enough. Oh, my soul, remember who you're singing to. Take heart, hold on. Remember who you're singing to. He's still the Lord Almighty. He's still the King of Kings. He's still the risen Savior reigning over everything. His name is still the highest. His strength will never fail. His word is everlasting yesterday, today, and forever. Keep the faith and the flame, don't give up the fight. In the night, speak His name, this hope is alive, our hope is alive. Oh, my soul, remember who you're singing to, take out, hold on. Remember who you're singing to. He's still the Lord Almighty. He's still the King of Kings. He's still the risen Savior reigning over everything. His name is still the highest. His strength will never fail. His word is everlasting yesterday, today, and forever. Yesterday, today, and forever. Still the highest, his strength will never fail. His word is everlasting, yesterday, today, and forever. Yesterday, today, and forever. Yesterday, today, and forever. Yesterday, today, and forever. Yesterday, today, and forever.
say that that is our truth. Yesterday, today, and forevermore, we hold on to the promise of you, the promise of your Son, and we use that truth with every single gift of a minute you give us to spread that truth to as many as possible. We thank you for the impact it had on our lives. We thank you for the impact it had on history. And God, we thank you that you could not imagine eternity without us in it. So you sent your son to willingly lay down his life as a sacrifice for us. And we remember that every time we eat this bread and drink this juice. It is in your son's holy and precious name we pray. Amen. I have the secret of time. The secret is do something super fun. And time goes boom. The other side of that secret is stand in line at the grocery store with a screaming three-year-old. And you'll be there forever. <laughs> that is forever. Um, I used to think when I'd go in for a physics final, as I may have said before, I was a physics major. Not a great physics major, but I, I, did, I did manage it. I used to go in and be like, you know, no matter what happens, in two hours, this is over. No matter what happens, the two hours is going to come and it's going to go and I'm going to get to the end and there's not going to be a darn thing I can do about it. For good or for ill, time is going. I also think about... Um, Pink Floyd lyrics. And then one day you find 10 years have got behind you. No one told you when to run. You missed the starting gun. Hey, God has blessed us. God has said, it is time to run. It is time to run the race. It is time to be in the race and be a part of the blessings that God has given us. And it's not tomorrow. And we didn't miss it yesterday. It's now. Now is the time. Let's continue to stand and sing. Oh, that's the wrong song. <laughs> wow. It's a good thing I look up. Too much talking. Okay, here we go. Start us off. Sometimes I wonder, is he faithful? Does he see me in my trouble? Does he understand? Sometimes I question if he's able. Can he rescue, can he save me again and again? But when I look back, did he move every mountain? See, yes, he did. So, yes, he can. Did he defeat the darkness? Did he deliver me? Yes, he did. So, yes, he can. Yes, he did. So, yes, he can. Because sometimes those voices try to tell me. I'm forgotten and I've fallen too far from his hands. But I know what kind of God he is, and I'm trusting in his promises. I'm believing and I'm singing, yes, he can. Did he move every mountain? Did he part every sea? Yes, he did. So, yes, he can. Darkness, did he deliver me? Yes, he did. So, yes, he can. Yes, he did. So, yes, he can. Cause I've seen too much, now I can't deny. He's come through every single time from the beginning into the Yes, he did. So, yes, he can. Did he defeat the darkness? Did he deliver me? Yes, he 
yes he did, so yes he can. Did he move every mountain? Did he part every sea? Yes he did, so yes he can. Did he defeat the darkness? Did he deliver me? Yes he did, so yes he can. Yes he did, so yes he can. Yes he did, yes he can. In this time of desperation, when all we know is doubt and fear There is only one foundation We believe We believe In this broken generation when all is dark, you help us see There is only one salvation We believe We believe We believe in God the Father We believe in Jesus Christ we believe in the Holy Spirit And He's given us new life We believe in the crucifixion We believe that He conquered death We believe in the resurrection And He's coming back again We believe So let our faith be more than anthems Greater than the songs we sing And in our weakness and temptations We believe We believe We believe in God the Father we believe in Jesus Christ We believe in the Holy Spirit And He's given us new life We believe in the crucifixion We believe that He conquered death We believe in the resurrection And He's coming back again let the loves be found and the dead be raised in the here and now. Let love invade, let the church live loud. Our God will see, we believe, we believe. And the gates of hell will not prevail, for the power of God has torn the veil. Now we know your love will never fail. We believe, we believe. God the Father, we believe in Jesus Christ, we believe in the Holy Spirit, and He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion, we believe that He conquered death, we believe in the resurrection, and He's coming back, He's coming back again. Again. We believe, we believe. Amen. Have a great week. Whatever happens, just wait for it. Be patient. It'll happen. We'll see you next week.